Okay. okay. Our topic for today is uh, utilitarianism. Okay. Yesterday we discussed the ontology. In just the um, the essence of the ontology uh, lies in the performance of duty. You can become an ethical person for the ontology if um, you perform your duty, not because others tell you to do so, but because your reason facilitates you, convinces you that to do one's duty autonomously is a non-negotiable, a categorical imperative. Today, we go to utilitarianism. Okay. The classic uh, utilitarianism classically opens with what is called the trolley problem. So let's watch this uh, short clip. By the way, if the short clip has an audio, if the audio does not, uh, if the audio is inaudible for you, kindly notify me uh, immediately. Okay. Okay, let me just fix the audio. Okay, let's start again uh, from the from the start of the video. A runaway train is heading towards five workers on a railway line. There's no way of warning, but you're standing near a lever that operates some points. Switch the points, and the train goes down a spur. Well, it is. There's another worker on that bit of track, too. But it's one fatality instead of five. Should you do that? Many people think the right thing to do would be to switch the points, to sacrifice one to save five, since that produces the best outcome possible. Now imagine the train heading for the workers again. This time it can only be stopped by pushing a very large man off a bridge. His great bulk would stop the train, but he'd die. Should you do that? Most people say no. But why not? Both thought experiments are cases of sacrificing one to save five. What the trolley problem examines is whether moral decisions are simply about outcomes or about the manner in which you achieve them. Some utilitarians argue that the two cases are not importantly different from each other. Both have similar consequences, and consequences are all that really matter. In each case, one person dies and five are saved. The best option in each harrowing situation. But lots of people say they would switch the points, but they wouldn't push the man off the bridge. Are they simply inconsistent, or are they onto something? Okay, let's 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 watch again the video one more time. A runaway train is heading towards five workers on a railway line. There's no way of warning, but you're standing near a lever that operates some points. Switch the points, and the train goes down a spur. 
Trouble is, there's another worker on that bit of track too, but it's one fatality instead of five. Should you do that? Many people think the right thing to do would be to switch the points, to sacrifice one to save five, since that produces the best outcome possible. Now imagine the train heading for the workers again. This time it can only be stopped by pushing a very large man off a bridge. His great bulk would stop the train, but he'd die. Should you do that? Most people say no. But why not? Both thought experiments are cases of sacrificing one to save five. What the trolley problem examines is whether moral decisions are simply about outcomes or about the manner in which you achieve them. Some utilitarians argue that the two cases are not importantly different from each other. Both have similar consequences, and consequences are all that really matter. In each case, one person dies and five are saved. The best option in each harrowing situation. But lots of people say they would switch the points, but they wouldn't push the man off the bridge. Are they simply inconsistent? Or are they on to something? Okay. Another classic way in introducing uh, utilitarianism is what is known as the ticking time bomb scenario. Okay. Um, you see these kinds of scenarios in movies. You know? um, anyway, you know, this is how the the thought experiment goes. Imagine yourself as a torturing or as a law enforcement officer and you have now in custody a guy who potentially has an information when a nuclear bomb will detonate and only that person knows the location. Okay. Um, so the question is very simple. Is it moral to, tor to torture a person? Okay? Is it moral to torture a person in exchange for a very important information to obtain or to stop an alleged attack? Okay? So, ethical ba namang torture ka ng iba in order to, sa to save maybe thousand lives, okay? So whenever I lecture this uh, utilitarianism uh, lesson, I ask my students to construct two columns, okay? So under the first column, I would usually ask students to um, lay down, you know, to, lay, to, to mention the good effects of torturing the terrorist. And on the other side, to list down the bad effects of torturing a person. Okay. Then, to add up all the good effects and all the bad effects, okay? and then to compare the two values. Alin dun sa dalawa yung mas may weight in guiding your decision whether to torture the person. Okay? Now, let's do that virtually. Let's do that virtually. So I'll call people uh, randomly and add up to this table. No? Good effects of torture and then the bad effects. Okay. Uh, let's start with Zurich. Can you add something to this table? Whether bad or good, depending on you. Um, good, sir. I think there's a high chance that you can get information that can help uh, mitigate terrorism. Uh, bad thing is you're up, you're the bad thing is you are uh, violating uh, a human right. Let's use human rights kasi maraming human rights involved. Thank you. Uh, you can mute. Um, 
Sino bang mga newcomers today? Si Joy. Joy Alpe. Wala. Si Zar. Azar. Sav. Sorry. Si Niza. Uh, ano po, sir? Good. I bad thing po. Uh, ano? Sab? Yes. Good thing na lang po, sir. Okay. Uh, Ma-ano po, pwede pong, pwede pong hindi mangyari yung pagtabog po nung bump kasi masasabi po nung someone na yon yung location po. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kervin. Haner. Um, uh, louder, please. I can hear you clearly. Um, yun. So, dun sa good po. Kilig niya po ba ako, sir? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ayan. Dun po sa good kasi yung pinaka-goal naman po nung action is yun nga, para po matigil yung incident. Ayun, kung ito-torture po natin, yung pinakamagandang pwede mangyari is yung sa information nga po. Mm, yun, yun yung bad po kasi yun, parang nabanggit na rin po yung sa human rights. Pero, sir, may question lang po. Okay. Um, how, how did we measure the weight po ng actions? Ano ba ka po yung sa good at saka yung sa bad? Yeah, so we're still performing, no? We're still performing a... Uh... Uh, the thought expert. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. 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 Nag, uh, po prohibit po ng any uh, torture or inhumane acts po sa tao. So, pag nag-commit ka po ng torture, you would also break the law sa Philippines. Okay. Good. Unlawful. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, wala tayong enough capability, no? Tapos inaano ko ba ito eh? Pinaprocess ko ba ito? But, however, hmm. Now, usually, when, uh, when I ask my students, no? Um, in comparison no, be between the bad effects and the good effects, uh, sa tingin nyo, saan mas, saan tayo mas, uh, saan tayo mas safe or saan tayo mas pabor, no? Uh, given the goods sa torture or given the bad things, anti-torture. Now, most often than not, uh, people would say na it would be better no to torture than not uh of course without prejudice dun sa unlawfulness ng act okay dun sa dun sa possible breach ng human rights when you torture persons no and uh the last si Harvey Bell, the last one was correct in saying that there are laws in fact not only the philippines no but if a country is a member of the United Nations, no? there is a universal declaration against uh, torture. But what is very odd is that 
kung sino pa yung mga bansa no na in paper uh, argued against terrorism at least in the level of the United Nations sila pa itong merong mga patagong um, uh, methods of torture no, to counter terrorism of course the overarching principle is that torture is torture is okay torture is uh, permissible even if it would save a lot of lives okay may kita natin yan dun sa trolley problem experiment no the first thought experiment is a psychologist no would say na mas maraming tao ang pipili to save five lives than one life so the person controlling the railways would pull the lever okay away from that one person and then direct the direction of the train to the five because five lives outweigh one life in the same manner in analogy in this uh, uh, torture no ticking time bomb scenario because the attack is imminent okay uh, and many lives are at stake it would be ethical for utilitarians to torture the life of one person than for thousands of lives to suffer okay so in this question, number four, extra question, how did you define good and bad effects? I think what makes us uh, conclude that to torture is something permissible is that goodness in this sense is about the outcome of the action. Okay? And the badness of the action is maraming mamamatay if we don't do it. Okay? That is why utilitarianism is also called consequentialism because what is at stake here is the consequences of your action okay the morality of actions depend on the persons benefiting or not benefiting from the action okay let me just give you a short reading no uh, in the abdinasir hasan blogs okay so sabi dito sa blog na to, in 2012, written on 2012, this is what torture is. Okay? Inten intentional causing of physical or mental harm on an individual. So maraming kinds of torture, no? Of course, you have the gruesome forms of torture, no? Yung, yung binababad sa tubig yung biktima, tapos uh, kukuryentehin. Okay? Tapos meron ding mga lighter forms of torture kagaya ng uh, solitary confinement no ikukulong mo lang hangga't hindi ka salita pero hangga't hindi ka salita pataas ng pataas yung forms of torture the blog says that states are guilty of this and the number one contradiction of course is to human rights okay sabi ni Roth isang uh, uh, isang international policy scholar no Torture and human rights violation became serious policy option for the U.S. So this is a big no? It is odd that U.S. one of the one of the members of UN ratifies is is in agreement that torture is something that should not be done. But there are certain studies which show that U.S. has this policy legitimizing. Uh, incognito, no? away from the eyes of the world, torture. Of course, from a utilitarian point of view, torture is an unfortunate but essential tool in order to ensure the greater good. And of course, we already mentioned that against torture, uh, in international law, it is illegal. Okay. Now, this is a very good commentary and a bizarre one, no? a very crazy one. So sabi dito, should you torture a person in order to uh, gather information for an alleged attack? The utilitarian position is yes, this person should be tortured in order to get any information that would help thwart an attack or stop an attack. 
Dershowitz, a leading U.S. political commentator, argues okay, na if ticking time bomb scenarios are inevitable, no, hindi natin ma maiiwasan. No, there are terrorists out there. Okay? And even without law prohibiting it, countries are still doing it. Dershowitz suggests that a torture license, no? so uh, merong, ang suggestion niya is sa isang judicial system ng gobyerno, merong mga license to torture. No? If not license to kill. Okay? In other words, he suggests that we should legalize torture. Okay? Pain that can be inflicted on suspects. So what do you think? No? Pwede ba yun? Mayroong mga licensed torturers sa isang bansa. Anyway, let's go now to the uh, body of the lesson. No? Classical utilitarianism. And the main proponent of this is Jeremy Bentham, no? an English philosopher, jurist reformer. So kung may kita nyo, he lived on uh, during 1748 and 1832 Bentham no, is a very important figure not only for philosophy no but for the feminist movement it was Bentham and Mill no his his collaborator as early as 18th century no who would write philosophical works um uplifting uh, the plight of LGBT. So as early as 18th century, meron na silang, in particular, women. No? Women are very oppressed during that time. So imagine, no, in 18th century, meron nang nag-iisip about gender. Okay? Let's watch this video. Um, this is very interesting video. Passed by hundreds of students every day, sitting in a box at the end of a hallway in a university building in London, is the corpse of one of the most important philosophers in modern history. Julie Bentham was a philosopher. He's considered the, the father of utilitarianism, the notion that you want to do the most good for the largest number of people. He was also a man well ahead of his time. Well, women were still being persecuted for witchcraft in other parts of Europe, Jeremy Bentham was espousing things like... Ah, I'm sorry, sorry. Like gay rights, the end of slavery, the end of child labor, animal rights. He was a guy who was forward-thinking, and when it came time for his death, he didn't want to be buried. He wanted to be made into an auto icon. Jeremy Bentham wrote his will when he was 21, and he already knew what he wanted to happen when he died. His body was given to his friend to dissect so that he might learn something from it. He then also wanted to be made into a corpse that he thought maybe his friends would come and visit that could be taken out at parties. Uh, and he did this for a number of reasons. One, he didn't have a real high view of the church, and in some ways, this was a way of kind of thumbing his nose at the religious traditions. Second, as a utilitarian, he genuinely thought, what is the most value that my dead body could possibly have? And finally, he was just funny. He was just a funny guy who probably thought that this was hilarious. These are the reasons he decided he wanted himself made into a auto icon. In fact, he used to uh, carry around a set of glass eyes that he wanted put into his auto icon and he would bring them to parties and he'd pull them out and sort of use them as a, a conversation piece and, and as a way of, of shocking some of the more proper people at the party. The same friend who dissected him also did the mummification of his head. He did so using uh, a Maori style of mummification that involves sort of stretching and heating and I think using hot sulfur, but it looked pretty bad. With sunken cheeks, the skin is sort of tight over the skull. It's not a super great look. Of course, they still, you know, dutifully like pop those glass eyes in there. Here's the solution. We're gonna have a beautiful wax head made for him. Uh, it's gonna look just like him. It's gonna be nice and fleshy faced like he was in life. For a long time, he sat there, serene, wax head, real head, down beneath his feet, ghoulishly looking out with these like very bright glass eyes. However, in the 70s, 
some students managed to just extract the head, the real head, which they then ransomed to the college, asking for a hundred pounds given to a charity. The university said, we'll give 10 pounds to the charity, and the students uh, dutifully returned the head. After this prank, they decided to keep it somewhere safer than between the feet of Bentham. So it is now in a Victorian bell jar in a box that takes four keys and two people to open, and no one's going to open it for you. That said, uh, Bentham's auto icon, it does get around. He was taken out for the 150th anniversary of the college, and he recently attended the retirement of a particularly long uh, serving provost. And when they had to take him to a conservator uh, in another part of London, uh, in a car, they just drove him there in the passenger seat, weekend at Bernie's style. Uh, there are some other stories of pranks that have happened. One of the most famous is that his head was then stolen and used in a football game. This is a, is a total myth for no other reason than basically his real head could never have survived. Some uh, students did steal the wax head in the 90s and take some pictures of themselves hanging out with it. As a utilitarian, I think Bentham asked himself, what good can my corpse do? And having had it dissected, having had it uh, appear at various functions, having it serve as just an amusing backdrop for the students of University College London, I think you can't get a whole lot more utility out of a dead body than that. Than them. So there's a particularly weird uh, Twitter stream uh, related to Jeremy Bentham that you should follow. There's a little camera hooked up which takes a, a picture every hour or so and sends a stream of basically what uh, Jeremy Bentham sees. It's like the Jeremy Bentham cam. It's strangely hypnotic, and I highly suggest you follow at Panopticon Stream uh, and, you know, see through the, through the eyes of Bentham himself. Okay, so weird, no? But if ever you uh, go to London, no? Don't miss the opportunity no, to go to UCL, no? To see the actual mommy of Bentham. Okay? Um, yeah. And then we have John Stuart Mill, no? uh, the collaborator of Bentham. Okay? So, still an English philosopher. Okay. So utilitarianism is an example, as I've mentioned kanina, of a consequentialist ethical framework. Okay? It is a theory, an ethical theory, that identifies that the moral value of an action with its consequence or outcome. Okay? Now, what we are saying here is that the goodness of an action or the badness of an action lies in the consequences. So, Sa utilitarianism, walang innately good. Okay? Walang, halimbawa, lying. Is lying bad? Uh, depende sa consequence, di ba? Uh, marami ba ang nakikinabang? If marami ang nakikinabang, then the action is good. If kakaunti ang nakikinabang or wala, ikaw lang yung nakikinabang, then the action is not good or bad. Okay? So if we contrast consequentialism no, with Aristotle's ethics, no, remember, yan yung naiwan nating lesson no, before lockdown. No? Virtue ethics tells us that an action is good if it contributes to the formation of a virtuous character. So for example, lying, lying cannot be good for virtue ethics. Okay? Because it defeats the virtue of honesty. Lying cannot be good for deontology. No? Because if you try universalizing lying, no? for example, lying about credentials in a curriculum vitae, if you universalize that, then there's, there are contradictions. Okay? The term utilitarianism is derived from the root word utility, generally meaning the quality or state of being useful. It comes from the Latin word utilis, 
useful from uti okay? or to use. Uh, one moment. But the ethical theory of utilitarianism is not simply usefulness. No? Let's qualify what we mean by usefulness here. Okay? It does not mean practical in the technical or economic sense. Instead, this refers to what we call greatest happiness for the greatest number. Okay? So this is what we mean by most useful. It, it doesn't mean uh, useful for myself. Okay? Utilitarianism is a framework that glorifies the concept as long as you distribute happiness to a greater number of people, okay, then your actions are moral. Okay? So this was uh, the proponents of this of this were Bentham and Mill. Bakit nagkaroon ng classical utilitarianism? No? It was a response to the need for legal and social reform in Britain. No? Uh, 17th century and 18th century was a very were very colorful times for uh, England. No? Uh, nag nagkaroon ng civil war, katatapos na ng civil war, okay? uh, and people are slowly trying to regain no? all facets of society, economic, social, moral. Okay? And Benjamin Mill thought that utilitarianism is a way no? to respond to the needs of the greater number. My questions ba? I hear some microphone. Are there questions? Okay, let's continue. Now, how do we know that how do we know that what we are doing is for the greatest good for the greatest number? A utilitarian principle. So there are three things that we should consider whenever we talk of utilitarianism. Number one, it's characterized by hedonism no, or pleasure. Okay? So, how do I know that what I am doing is moral? Number one, that thing must be pleasurable. It brings pleasure. Okay? Number two, it must be impartial. Okay? It is not enough that the good is pleasurable. It should be also the good or the pleasure of many. The happiness of one counts the same as everyone else's. It doesn't matter if it is the agent, yung gumagawa ng action, or somebody else's. It doesn't matter if it is the king's or the beggar's happiness. It should be impartial for everyone. And the third is instrumentality. No action is morally good or morally bad in itself. The important thing is consequence. Okay? So, kailangan pleasurable, kailangan greatest good for the greatest number, at kailangan yung action has, has, is instrumental for good consequences. Okay? However, merong pagkakaiba si Bentham and Mill when it comes to utilitarianism. Okay? Now, for Bentham, he says in his work, Introduction to the Principles of Morals and Legislation, that pain and pleasure are the two sovereign masters of the human being. No? Come to think of it, when we were children, diba? Um, when we were babies, rather, no? malalaman ng magulang mo na hindi okay yung ginagawa nila sa isang baby or sa atin kapag umiyak ang isang baby. Okay? Malalaman nilang nagugustuhan natin when we do not cry, when we exhibit, um, when we exhibit joy, when we exhibit, uh, pag tumatawa tayo, okay? That is precisely the point of Bentham. Kahit hindi na tayo baby, pain and pleasure, okay? Pain and pleasure guides our life, okay? Uh, mas gusto natin minsan matulog kesa mag-aral because pag natulog ka, that's pleasure. That is, uh, desirable. Okay? The ultimate cause of a human's action is to achieve pleasure or to avoid pain. Diba? On a Thursday night or a Friday night here in LB, diba? 
Some of us would choose to walwal than to study. Bakit? Kasi may weekend naman. No? Let Friday be a Friday. Let Thursday serve its purpose. Okay? Pleasure over pain. The principle of utility is that principle which approves or disapproves of every action whatsoever according to the tendency which it appears to have to augment or diminish the happiness of the party whose interest is in question. So the principle of utility is to augment happiness or pleasure. Okay? Augment means to add up. By utility, it is meant that the property of any object whereby it tends to produce benefit, advantage, pleasure, good, or happiness. Or what comes again to the same thing, to prevent mischief, pain, evil, or unhappiness. Okay? If that party be community in general, the happiness of the community, if a particular individual, then the happiness of that individual. To this end, Bentham came up with what he called a philosophic calculus. Yes, may calculus po sa philosophy. No? Or a happiness calculator. So si Bentham, meron siyang quantitative way, numerical way, in considering what is to be considered uh, moral. Okay? So ito yan, no? there are seven questions you must ask to assess a certain action. Okay? Intensity, duration, certainty, propinquity, fecundity, purity, extent. So, animawa, no? You're trying to weigh what would be the most better action on a Friday evening. Okay? Magwalwal sa square. Unfortunately, walang square ngayon. No? Or to study. Okay? So, we can ask, no? How intense is the pleasure between walwal and studying? Ba? Siyempre, mas may intensity yung pleasure sa pagwawalwal on a Friday night. How does the pleasure last? As long as we as long as you are with your friends, then uh tuloy yung ligaya, ba? Is uh, studying, no? Meron bang pleasure doon? of hand parang wala ba? certainty how cert hindi ko kayo, hindi ko kayo tinuturuan magwalwal na no? by the way no we're trying to just apply the questions how certain are you that the pleasure will occur okay syempre sa walwal pleasure agad yun kasi number one, no uh, mahilig ka either mahilig ka sa alak or mahilig ka mamulutan no you are with your friends di ba uh, puro kwentuhan, no? uh, tawa kayo ng tawa, whereas sa studying, uh, you can be locked in your dorm, no? trying to be virtuous. Okay? And the pleasure is uncertain. No? If not pleasure, baka sumakit pa ulo mo, pakaaral. Number four, how soon will the pleasure be experienced? Ah, Siyempre sa walwal, the soonest. Di ba? Sa pag-aaral, meron naman pleasure. No? But after, after studying for long hours. No? At yung pleasure na yon hindi pa sure. No? Kasi baka aral ka ng aral, tapos bagsak. Diba? Fecundity. How many more pleasures will happen because of this one? Dito siguro debatable. No? Kasi oo, maghihirap ka nga sa pag-aaral. Pero kapag pinagbutihan mo yung pag-aaral mo, uh, more pleasures may come. Diba? Uh, pumasa ka. Nagkaroon ka ng reward sa magulang mo for being a good son or daughter. Okay? Purity. How free from pain is the pleasure? Ayan. No? Dito debatable din. Kasi, oo nga, nag-enjoy ka nga nung gabi. Pero kinabukasan, nakalak ka na sa dorm mo kasi suka ka ng suka. Diba? Tapos, ah, uh, Feeling mo purgatorio na, no? Yung ulo mo, sakit-sakit. Hindi ka makakilos. Bedridden ka sa araw na yon. Eh kung nag-aaral ka lang nung gabi, wala. Ba problemahin na hangover, kinaumaga. Okay? Extend. 
how many of us will experience the pleasure? Ah, debatable din yan. No? Kapag hindi ka sumama sa ayan ng tropa mo, magtatampo sa iyo yung tropa mo. No? Wala na, walang pleasure doon. Okay? Now, uh, these are just, no, these are very uh, ephemeral, no? mababaw na na examples. But in the case of torture, no? Siyempre, may intensity yung pleasure. No? Na, ma na masalba mo yung buhay ng marami. The pleasure is not just for the moment na madet na madetonate mo yung bomba. But for for the longest time, maraming mabubuhay na tao. Certainty sa, tor sa torture medyo malabo. Kasi halimbawa, paano kung nambablaf lang yung terorista na nahuli mo? No? Hindi niya talaga ibigay. Propinquity. No? Immediate. May pleasure kapag na-stop mo yung bomba. Fecundity. Ang daming, uh, very, maraming fecundity na nangyayari kapag na-stop mo yung, pag, pag nang-torture ka. No ba? Madedetonate mo yung bomba. Uh, Maraming buhay ng tao masasalba. Maraming mga bata ang hindi magiging fatherless, motherless, or parentless. No? Okay. Purity, no? Isa lang yung magsasuffer, isa lang yung may pain over the pleasure of thousands of lives. Okay. That's extent. So, Bentham is saying that we need to answer these questions numerically. Okay? Given two options to torture or not, numerically, given the seven criteria, sino yung mas leaning dun sa criteria? Ah, hindi dapat man torture. Okay? One who is faced with deciding on whether an action is to be done or not must ask oneself whether the action will bring, will bring about greater uh, greater good than, than an alternative action. Okay? For example, will action A bring about greater incent? Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina. Dawa, cocaine. Diba? I'm sure cocaine, kapag binalik natin dun sa criteria, yan. No? Siguro sa cocaine, merong immediate pleasure. Diba? Pero in long term, wala. So, baka yung paggamit ng cocaine, it's, it's not a very utilitarian thing. Okay? Kasi, mas maraming mapapasama ang buhay kapag naggumagamit ka ng shabu. But if more than one of the circumstances are involved in an action, all the other amounts of pleasure and pain must be accounted for. For example, buying a new pair of rubber shoes. Okay? One is therefore reminded that even a seemingly innocuous act, innocuous means um, uh, not harmful. Di ba pag bumili ka naman ng sapatos, it seems not harmful. No? As long as may pera ka, para sa iyo naman yun. But, Innocuous actions might turn out to have systemic effects. Bawa, leather shoes. No? To the environment. No? Ginagawa kasi sa pabrika yan. To conditions elsewhere. But if you think of it, when you, bear, when you buy a pair of rubber shoes, meron kang sure na natutulungan ang trabahador. No? Kasi may sumisweldo kapag bumibili ka ng rubber shoes. Again, what is meant by Bentham is that things are fluid. Morality is fluid when we talk of utilitarianism. No? Depende when you weigh things. Mas marami ba na ikinabang? Mas marami ba na nasaktan? No? If the net amount, no? kapag nag-accounting ka, na-encounter mo yung net amount na yan. No? No? Yung net amount, no? yung after all the deductions, after all the taxes, ito yung net na kikitain mo. The same principle is for utilitarianism. No? Very quantitative. If the net amount to, to be produced by an action leans towards pleasure than pain, then an action is good. I use the, the, the quotation marks good kasi, kasi nga sa utilitarianism, walang 
uh, walang exact good. Lying can be can be at times harmful, so hindi siya good. But when lying accommodates you more pleasures, then the action becomes good. Uh, ito ay ano lang, short poem, no? Uh, you need not to memorize this. No? Okay. Pwede nyo balikan yan when I post the slides. Okay. Public, wide, no? pain, avoid. Pagka, pagka may sakit, pag masakit daw ang gagawin, then dapat kakaunti lang may kinaang masasaktan. Okay. Now, let's go to mill. Okay. From utilitarianism, of the book of Mill, he adds a qualitative dimension. No? Gaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, si Bentham masyadong quantitative. What Mill is doing here is he does not abandon Bentham's utilitarianism, but he adds a qualitative dimension to Bentham's purely quantitative one. Okay? Here's a direct quote from Mill. holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness, is, by happiness we mean intended pleasure in the absence of pain. By unhappiness, pain and the privation of pleasure or absence of pleasure. Okay? So, naniniwala pa rin si Mil, no? That, how do we know that which is good? If there is happiness, pleasure. But Mill's version modifies Bentham's. He says, It is quite compatible with the principle of utility to recognize the fact that some kinds of pleasure are more desirable and more valuable than others. Okay? How does Mill determine differences in quality? The opinion of one with experience in different kinds of pleasure. Of two pleasures, if there be one to which all or almost all who have experience of both give a decided preference, irrespective of any feeling of moral obligation, to prefer it, that is the more desirable pleasure. So sabi ni Mil, how do we know whether a pleasure is, has quality? Okay, sabi ni Mil, ah, kailangan mong hingi ng opinion ng may experience na dun sa gusto mong malaman kung pleasurable or hindi. Just to review, no? remember, Aristotle says no, that for you to determine virtue, hindi, hindi lang yung sarili mong deliberation. No? If you remember our lesson on virtue ethics, Aristotle says na kailangan mong tanungin yung mga moral exemplars. Yung mga taong may karanasan na regarding that virtue. And here, Mill is also saying, if you want to know the quality of a pleasure, pleasure A between pleasure B, action A between action B, then you need the opinions of others who might have analogous, if not similar experiences. Okay? Now, Mill is famous in comparing Socrates and a swine or a pig. Sabi niya rito, it is better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. Remember, kung nakwento ko na sa inyo, kaya si Socrates ay sikat, no? Sikat siya in one famous quote, no? There is only one thing that I know. That I do not know. No? That Anong ibig sabihin nito? Socrates is saying that in philosophizing, mas virtuous pa yung hindi ka makontento sa knowledge na nakuha mo versus makontento ka sa kakarampot na kaalamang nakuha mo. Diba? Sa ibang mga sayings, no? uh, they would say, uh, little knowledge is dangerous. Okay? Here, Mill is saying na ang satisfaction ng tao 
maaring hindi mafulfill. Okay? Sabi niya, mas mainam yun to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Di ba ang baboy san lang naman, saan siya, saan, siya, saan siya satisfied? Kapag meron siyang malaking lugar na mapaglalaroan ng putik, ang baboy satisfied na sa, sa not so good quality of food. Di ba? Kanin baboy, kung tawagin. Ang tao, hindi dapat ganoon. Hindi siya dapat satisfied sa kakarampot na pleasure. Okay? Dapat masatisfy siya hindi lang sa kakarampot na pleasure, kundi sa pleasure na may quality. No? Between using cocaine and not using cocaine, these things are pleasurable. Using cocaine has its own pleasures. But would you be satisfied on that? Mill says no. no. You should choose the, the pleasure that has more quality in it. Okay? And hindi ka dapat ma-stuck doon. Dapat you aspire for more pleasures. Not only for yourself, but for others. Di ba? When it comes to running the government, for example now, are you satisfied with how the government is handling the, the COVID-19 situation? I think if you're satisfied, then maybe you are in the wrong notion of what satisfaction means. Kasi the more you are dissatisfied with a certain thing when it comes to government, no? the more you are dissatisfied, I think dissatisfaction with the government is not a bad thing at all. Okay? Because when a person is dissatisfied, the more he or she is clamoring for accountability from the government. And it's a good sign of democracy. You see? No? That utilitarianism has something uh, good to give us when it comes to running the government. For me, therefore, the greatest, the word, the term greatest in the greatest happiness principle does not just refer to the quantity of happiness. Okay? But of, of, of course it does. Kailangan ng quantity. But also to a higher quality or kind of happiness. That everyone affected regardless of status, could experience as the consequences of the action in question. Utilitarianism, therefore, could only attain its end by the general cultivation of nobleness of character. Diba? Between pagbibigay ng lamsam sa mga mahihirap versus giving a chance sa mga mahihirap na magkaroon ng skills para lang hindi dumepende sa gobyerno, no? which is more desirable. Okay? Even if each individual were only benefited by the nobleness of others and his own so far, as happiness is concerned, were a sheer deduction from the benefit. Okay? Nakaka-benefit ka nga, pero wala naman nangyayari sa virtue mo bilang tao. The cultivation of the nobleness of character. Sabi ni Mil, that is not a good pleasure. So note here, the possible connection to Aristotelian ethics or virtue ethics. Kung si Bentham puro numero, no, ah, intense ba yung pleasure na yan? Certain ba yung pleasure niya? And so forth and so on. Mill tries to add, after the seven, which pleasure has more quality? So between walwal and studying, maybe studying would win. Because Studying has more quality. According to the greatest happiness principle, the ultimate end, with references, I will not anymore read, no? but the gist of this paragraph is, Mill is just trying to stress that when we talk of pleasure, when we talk of the greatest happiness principle, it must be I, I, I highlighted in red, both in point of quantity and quality. Okay. How do you know that it has quality? Listening to others. Okay. So for example, in taxation, no, what can you say is the net consequence of you accurately paying for your income tax? 
or at least sa case nyo, no, hindi pa naman kayo nagbabayad ng tax, or at least buying highly taxed products. Now, this is something uh, debatable. No? In some first world countries, such as Norway, for example, mataas ang tax ng tao, pero libre ang services. Okay? How about here in the Philippines? I'll call someone. Meron bang bagong sali? Uh, Gleven, Gleven, what do you think? Are you still with us, Gleven? Hello. Ayan. What do you think? Um, sa akin po, yung net consequence po dito sa Philippines ay hindi po parang hindi po siya nakikita or hindi po siya malaki. And okay. kasi po parang since meron po tayong tax na binabayaran tapos meron pa po tayong value added tax tapos okay. parang hindi naman po siya nag-reflect sa public services natin. Yun okay. po. Parang hindi po siya nakikita. Okay. Uh, one more before I continue. Kervin. Hmm. Ah, hindi. Natawag, natawag na pala ito. Kodal. Are you with us? Yes, po, sir. What do you think, Mr. Kodal? Um, I think the net consequence of uh, paying ta uh, tax here in the Philippines is uh, pretty much uh, bad in the case of uh, the people paying the tax because uh, the people doesn't really uh, see a lot of differences that it makes, uh, especially now of on what's going on with the country, with uh, the failing of, uh, of, of certain health services, right now and such so i don't think that uh, i and so i think that there is a uh, negative consequence of then paying uh paying taxes because it is then um being misused or by the government and such. okay thank you um dito may kita no labas tayo sa issue ng tax no i think we have a notion of how tax is here in the philippines dito mo may kita na very useful or very used rather, gamit na gamit ang utilitarianism sa mindset ng ordinaryong Pilipino. No? I remember, no, uh, hindi na lang magbabanggit ng pangalan ng politiko, pero narinig ito madalas, no? Ah, oh, eh, alam mo nang nangongurap yung mayor na yan o yung congressman na yan, bakit mo pa rin binoboto? Eh kasi nakakatulong naman sila sa amin. You see? Kung narinig niyo na sa ibang subject yung tinatawag na patron client relationship sa sa politics, no? Yung patron client relationship is tayo ang kliyente, ang normal na ang mga ordinaryong tao, at ang patron ay ang mga politiko. Bakit sila na elect at bakit nagkakaroon ng mga political dynasty? I think precisely because of utilitarianism. Hindi man alam ng tao yung utilitarianism sa theory, but it works, di ba? Ah Binoboto ka yan kasi nakikinabang yung pamilya namin. Nagnanakaw naman yun eh, pero kakaunti lang. No? Mas marami pa rin siya nagagawa para sa nakararami. You see? So, utilitarianism is... Utilitarianism can be both a blessing and a curse in the mindsets of people. Okay? Now, let's assess utilitarianism. Okay, let's compare. Okay? Versus virtue ethics. Virtue ethics focuses on the development of one's character. No? The goodness of an act lies in its potential contribution to the formation of an excellent character. So yung virtue ethics, masasabi natin um, ang concentration ay nasa sarili. No? You do actions that will cultivate your character. Okay? Samantalang in utilitarianism, it focuses on act evaluation rather than character evaluation. 
Will certain action X bring about the greatest good for the greatest number? Ito, madaling nanda, no? GGFTGN. Ha? Greatest good for the greatest number. Will, will this action, so, so ang utilitarianism, hindi siya concerned about virtue. Okay? Mas concerned siya sa uh, evaluation ng actions. Okay? Now, in comparison with the ontology, of course, both frameworks focus on the act in question. But for the ontology, yung goodness or morality of an action lies in the act itself. If you remember our discussion yesterday, when we do a universalizability test, we do not test the consequences of an action. But we test whether the act of doing that certain action is done autonomously okay, and with a sense of duty. Okay? While utilitarianism focuses on the consequences of an act. Dito, if you remember yesterday, um, ang deontology is importante yung means para sa end. Okay? Kapag ang means mo ay hindi ginawa ng maayos, no, not with a sense of duty, then the end surely will crumble. But for utilitarianism, the ends justify the means. So halimbawa, ikaw si Robin Hood. Diba? Kung, I'm, I'm sure kilala niyo si Robin Hood. No? Ang nagnanakaw, tapos ipamimigay niya. That is very utilitarian. Mali yung pagnanakaw, pero with a utilitarian eye, tama yun. Because the actions of Robin Hood contribute to the greatest good for the greatest number. The act gains moral value depending on the net effect it has on all moral agents concerned. Once duty, meron bang duty sa utilitarianism? Meron naman. It is to do whatever will bring about the greatest good for the greatest number. Okay? Now, here is an excerpt from, if you have not read this novel, no, I suggest you read. This is a classic. The Russian novel, The Karamasov Brothers. No? So yung bida, si Ivan Karamasov, okay, uh, china-challenge niya yung kanyang kapatid na si Alyosha. No? Sabi niya, tell me honestly, I challenge you. Answer me. Imagine that you are charged with building the edifice of human destiny. The ultimate aim of which is to bring people happiness, to give them peace and contentment at last. But that in order to achieve this, it is essential and unavoidable to torture just one little speck of creation, that same little child beating her chest with her little fists and imagine that this edifice has to be erected on her unexpiated tears. Would you agree to be the architect under those conditions? Tell me honestly. So, hypothetically, no, if merong magsasuffer na bata para lang matupad yung pangarap mo para sa nakararami, would you do it? Okay? Uh, ang mga movies ngayon filled with utilitarian concepts no halimbawa si Thanos di ba uh, in order to save the universe he has to uh, use the infinity stones to wipe out half of the population no so kay Thanos hindi masama yon kasi ang kanyang intention is to save the world from corruption if you have watched, for example, uh, ano to? Kingsman. Of course, the Kingsman, yung, yung, yung uh, movie, yung Kingsman 1. No? Medyo doubt, doubtful kung utilitarian yan. Kasi uh, gusto niyang exterminate lahat. Tapos ang matitira lang yung mga, yung mga leaders. No? Anyway, no? so if you think Wild, widely, no? almost everything no, ay very utilitarian. Sa so, tingin nyo ba yung COVID-19 situation na pagbababa ng mga classification ng community quarantine ay uh, 
uh, dahil health wise, no? Health purely health ang reason? No. It's economy. And it's a very utilitarian move. No? Kailangan ng pera. Kailangan ng mapaikot yung ekonomiya. Kaya kailangan natin ng ma-ease down, no? Yung lockdown. Now, Merong problem ang utilitarianism. No? Yung maging unlawful yung actions mo. Yung diniscuss natin kanina, these are what we called act utilitarian positions. Okay? Now, in the 20th century, nagkaroon ng modification. Kasi nga, yun nga, basta gawin mo yun para sa nakararami, pwede na. E paano pagpapatay ka ng kakaunti? Okay? Yan. Yan yung problem ng act utilitarianism. It focuses on the act itself. Okay? Now, merong pagbabago na binigay ang mga philosophers. No? Yung tinatawag na rule utilitarianism. What is rule utilitarianism? The moral value of an act depends on whether the moral rule it follows will result in the greatest happiness for the greatest number. Okay? Kung familiar kayo sa kwento ni Batman, Makikita niyo na si Batman, rule utilitarian siya. Bakit? Tiyan niyo si Joker. Hindi pinapatay ni Batman si Joker. No? Kung familiar kayo sa story ni Batman. Hindi pinapatay ni Batman si Joker. Ang ginagawa lang niya, iiwanan niya si Joker ng medyo masakit ang katawan with the hope na magbabago si Joker. Okay? So we can say na Rule utilitarian si Batman. Bakit? He wants to save Gotham, the city of Gotham, from Joker and the other villains. Greatest number pa rin nasa isip ni Batman. Pero hindi niya pinapatay. Bakit? Kasi kay Batman, it is not moral to kill. So again, going back to the definition of rule utilitarianism, an act depends on whether the moral rule it follows will result in the greatest happiness for the greatest number. Okay? Okay na i-consider mo yung good ng nakararami, but you must also consider whether the way in which you ensure the greatest good for the greatest number is moral. Like for example, respecting life. Yung Avengers, hindi sila rule utilitarian, act utilitarian sila. No? Generally, generally speaking. Okay? Kasi kailangan nilang patayin si Thanos. Yun yung aim nila. Ha? Which is nagawa nila. Okay? Uh, more often than not, yung Marvel, no? hindi sila rule utilitarian. Yung Justice League, mga rule utilitarian, generally, yung mga superheroes. Okay? So applying it to real life, uh, hindi ka pwede bilang mayor, hindi ka lang dapat basta magpaalis ng informal settlers. Bakit? Eh kasi wala silang titirhan. So under rule utilitarian, pwede mong i-demolish. No? Kasi ang iniisip mo benefit ng city, di ba? Popul uh, pollution. Ayaw mo ng pollution. So yung malalapit sa mga ilog, sa bodies of water, ide-demolish mo. Pero dapat hindi lang natatapos doon. Dapat bigyan mo sila ng re relocation. At dapat sa relocation, kailangan meron silang mapagkukunan ng hanap ng ikabubuhay. That is what how rule utilitarian mission works. Okay? So in brief, we're already nearing the end. Utilitarianism is a consequentialist theory. Why? Simply because utilitarianism is after the consequence for the greatest number. Bentham's utilitarianism, philosophic calculus, yung pito, it's more on quantity. While Mill's utilitarianism adds a qualitative happiness to the quantitative happiness of Bentham. Sample scenario, we took up taxation. Okay. Utilitarianism versus the other two frameworks we have studied so far. We said that virtue ethics is more of the cultivation of the personal character, while utilitarianism is not concerned with the cultivation of virtue, but 
the outcome of the action. The same also can be said with deontology. For deontology, the morality of an action lies in the performance of an action, while utilitarianism is the outcome of the action. Meron bang duty sa utilitarianism? Meron. And that is to ensure the greatest good for the greatest number. And then, we critique utilitarianism dahil um, you can be a utilitarian and at the same time a lawbreaker. The, co the, the compromise is rule utilitarianism. You ensure the greatest good for the greatest number, but following certain moral rules, such as not killing, 